Welcome to part four of the Johnson Viking 2 model CDC transmitter repair. In the last video I was able to get the high voltage up and we have full power out. So now it's time to repair the audio section and to update the push to talk system. That rumbling you're hearing in the background is one of my cats goofing around on the floor. So first step I'm going to get into the audio section we're going to carve out all these wax caps and out of tolerance resistors. I'll rebuild that and then we'll test the audio. Then I'm going to get in here and pull out this monster TR relay. We're going to install the D-Lab module here and swing this wiring over cleaning up this area. That will also entail removing this cap and these two diodes that are powering that push talk system. I'm going to start with the audio section and how I handle this is I take a couple pictures just for reference but if you have the schematic it's pretty easy to rebuild the audio section so I just take a pair of wire cutters and I clip out this old stuff I don't worry too much about where it was at it's all got to come out all these wax caps are bad news so I'll clip all those out and then pretty much I'm sure all these resistors are way out of tolerance. There's no reason to try to save the old ones. Just completely rebuild this audio preamp section and it'll work great. I have the audio preamp section rebuilt. Utilize the Hammond 124B interstage transformer. The microphone is not connected at this time but I'm going to power the transmitter and verify the audio section is operational. Then I'm going to get up here and remove the old push to talk relay and the power supply that supported it. Get this thing cleaned up. Alright, we're going to check the audio preamp section of the Viking 2 right up to the grids of the 807s. So I'm testing just the preamp section. We're not going to apply high voltage. I'm using the audio generator as the input, we're monitoring on a Tektronix scope. So I'm connected right now to the mic input. I'm going to bring up the audio gain and now watch on the scope. So that's one grid of 807. We'll go to the other. I'll bring up my audio gain back to the scope. We have audio present there too and it looks nice and clean. When you're testing this section, you do not have to do anything but turn on your film at voltage because that brings up the 350 volt DC that powers the preamp section. Now that we know the audio section is operational, I'm going to remove this old push to talk relay system. So down here, you see this shielded cable? That actually goes up along the wire harness and that is the push to talk lead that would normally operate this relay. That's coming out. There's also some power supply cabling going up to these diodes and filter cap. That's going to be removed as well as these components. Then on the contacts of this relay there's wires that are actually in parallel with the plate switch. I'm going to maintain those but I'm going to pull them back and hook them up to the new push talk module. This is where the new push to talk module will reside in the radio. I'll be swinging those plate switch wires down to the contacts. And of course we have a filament feed to power the board and the push to talk line that goes to the mic connector. So I had to put the Viking up on its top so I could install the new push to talk module. While I was wiring this module up, something caught my eye. Looking over here by the 6146, see these green filament wires one of them has a blister on the side of it indicating that it got hot and I thought oh no so I inspected the rest of the wire harness I didn't see any signs of the overheating until I got over here by the rear VFO socket if you look down there there's another blob okay so I followed the wires up and I saw this black gooey cylinder under here. I thought, you know what? That's supposed to be a coil of wire. 
So what happened in the past, either somebody hooked up an incorrect VFO or their VFO developed a short on the filament circuit. Unfortunately, this wiring is not fuse protected. So if you develop a filament short anywhere on the Viking 2, its only choice is to melt the wiring. So since I normally see this fault where the wiring exits the radio for the VFO, my fix is install a fuse holder to the chassis. Pull that green wiring, go through the fuse, fuse it at say one amp, and then go back to that terminal. Then if somebody accidentally hooks up the incorrect item or a shorted item, it'll just pop the fuse. All right, I've got the fuse installed, which protects the rear VFO outlet six volt AC line. Here is the old crispy critter coil that was in there. We're here in a few moments. We're gonna be testing the audio on the Johnson Viking 2 CDC. I ended up swapping out that Hammond 124B with an actual SNC interstage transformer, but this one came out of a Valiant. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what it sounds like. You see my nifty little C-clamp here. What I did is temporarily connected a two-pin mic jack because I do not have the front panel. So I had to have some way to support it. I've got a Kenwood R2000 waiting over here on the sideline and we're gonna to listen to the Viking. All right, here we go, open chassis test of the Johnson Viking 2. I'm connected to a Palstar dummy load. We still have the meter mounted remotely and I'm monitoring modulation. So I'm keying it up and we're gonna bring up the R2000, listen to the audio. All right, here's the Viking 2 monitoring on an R2000. I'm getting some feedback because I'm pretty close to the receiver but she has plenty of modulation. All right, since we are testing open chassis, there will be some noise that can be induced into the receiver, but this is a pretty good indication that the audio is working. Hello, hello one two, and six TLU. Testing the Johnson Viking two after repair. All right, so now I'm gonna turn down the audio on the receiver. And if you watch the modulation meter, all kinds of forward modulation. Look at that wattage. So she's talking. All right, so that's a wrap on the Johnson Viking 2 CDC transmitter repair. What I have left to do is clean the chassis, clean controls and lube them, get the front panel reinstalled, and put her on the air and get some live reports. If you have a Johnson Viking 2, and you either have a problem with it and you need help, or if you want one repaired, contact me. I'd be glad to take it on.